we're talking about long-lived assets. In other words, machines, equipment, uh, buildings, uh, those types of things. And we've talked about how to buy them, how to sell them or dispose of them, and how to depreciate them. There's a couple other topics that I should probably share with you. One has to do with partial years. We never buy our long-lived assets on January 1 or the first day of the fiscal year, do we? We buy them throughout the year. That means when we depreciate them, we have to be sensitive to how long we own the asset for the current year. So if we purchase them on the first day of the year, yes, I would take a full year's depreciation. If I purchased them six months into the year, I should only take a partial year or six months, half a year's worth of depreciation. Many businesses, instead of looking at how many months I've owned an asset, they'll look at it like, did I buy it in the first half of the year? If I bought it in the first half of the year, I'm going to take a whole year. If I bought it in the second half of the year, I'm going to take a half a year. So that's one of the conventions or ways that we handle depreciation of assets purchased during the year. For income tax purposes, they have their own convention. And that says if you buy it, you're going to take a half year in the year of acquisition and take a half year in the year of disposal. So partial years is something that you've got to ask the question about. How does this business handle the acquisition or disposal of assets and do I take any depreciation in the year of acquisition? Do I take any depreciation expense in the year of disposal? That's partial years convention. The other thing that you need to be aware of, and we'll come down to this one, is tax versus financial ways of doing depreciation. What we've been talking about with straight line units of production and double declining balance is the financial approaches to doing depreciation. And as you saw in the text, most businesses in the United States use the straight line method for financial statement purposes. It's the same amount every year, very easy to compute, cal uh, the computer does it for you. But when we turn to do our income taxes, there is a whole other set of rules. In fact, income taxes has something called ACRES, Accelerated Cost Recovery. They have MAKERS, Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery. So as you can see, they've got a lot of rules going on about how to compute depreciation for tax purposes. And when we look at tax approaches, they have their own set of rules for how you handle partial years. They have their own set of rules for how long assets live. Computers live three years, cars live five, and so on. So they mandate a lot of the things that we have some choices about in financial accounting. So be aware that tax versus financial can be very, very different as far as depreciation and their approaches to it. The last thing I want to point out to you is there can be a revision of your depreciation rates. So say you uh, say an asset is going to live five years, but within two years of that asset's life, you do a major addition on that asset. So you have a building, you doubled it in size, so what do you have to do? You have to revise the depreciation saying it's either going to live longer or I'm going to change the method from double declining balance to straight line. So realize that you can change your mind and revise your depreciation rates, your depreciation cost basis, um, the depreciation years of use, all depends upon what you do with that um, asset over its useful life and if there's any improvements, betterments, extraordinary repairs, or changes in the life. So as you can see, lots of other things to think about when we deal with depreciation.